biologist, so I've decided to do my projects on spiders, even though I'm actually scared of spiders, so that's why I want to really show and amplify arachnophobia through visual representation. Now, I'm achieving this by using the macro lens, which again is my speciality. My name is Dmitry Lagunov. I am curator of entomology collections at the Manchester Museum. My particular speciality is spiders. <music> Students uh, of the university, I met a famous professor who was an arachnologist who studied spiders and he actually offered this topic to me, this object, and I was fascinated. <music> Arachnophobia explores the fear of spiders through the macro lens, showing uncomfortable footage of spiders eating and moving in their signature manner. The footage is shown to people who suffer from the phobia in order to observe and document their reaction. The purpose of the film is to try and further understand the psychological reaction of potentially irrational fear that is fiercely invoked by even the sight of an eight-legged carnivore. This concept, I feel, links to art and the fact that simply the aesthetic of something can stir such emotions. Asking such questions as whether it's size that determines the scale of the fear or specific species, do the viewers, when asked to think deeply, conclude that fear is rational or irrational? Spider phobia, arachnophobia, as we say. So, uh, it's uh, quite irrational in many ways, as you suggested, because until the age of five, six, seven years old, kids aren't scared of anything. They do have no fear against creepy crawlies or things like that, and they learn this from parents. Okay. And their mom says, oh, this, don't touch it, this is dangerous. Yeah, this is yeah. And this reaction is kind of imprinted in their mm -hmm. brain, and then um, they, they react as they react, and they dislike things or hate them or even scared. As, so it can be it, cultural, really, it, as well. it, it, it is mostly cultural. Uh, of course, there might be, of course, I'm not a psychologist, I cannot talk about, uh, you know, deep, you know, <laughs> features of yeah, our brain, yeah. but uh, it might be that tiny percent, maybe one, 1.5 percent of population uh, having a kind of innate fear. Logical reaction, yeah. when, we, when you have arachnophobia as a result of some accident of things which happened to you in the past, or you learn it from parents, or something coincided with your reaction and then uh, aggravated by reaction of your parents, then you start reacting this way. Yeah, it's, so no, it's, it's not innate by, okay. by, by its nature, it's, it's a still consequence of your pre pre previous reaction, this is my, okay. my, my understanding. In some countries a spider can be a deadly creature that can cause fatalities, but here in Britain, the common house spider still causes a reaction as if that was the case. Potentially highlighting the fear is more to do with the anatomical structure of the organism and its movement opposed to its killing potential. Uh, of course, you need to read the special literature about this. They're poisonous, we mean so dangerous to us. Uh, they're venomous because all spiders, except for one group, have poison glands. They are predators. They use their poison glands to, to, to produce uh, venom, which they use uh, to paralyze or to kill their prey. The predators, they need mm -hmm. to have tools to kill their prey. Uh, these are not claws, not teeth. Mm -hmm. This is venom. Like snakes. Yeah, so they are created to kill basically they're predators yeah uh, yeah they, they they evolved to kill i would say spiders indeed are very old uh, creatures they are known from carboniferous period close up so this is a male of tarantula it's preserved as all spider collections are done 
preserved in 70% alcohol. This is pre preservative prevents them from decaying. So, uh, in uh, the Manchester Museum, we have a large collection of spiders, which uh, accounts for about 150,000 specimens. We have all British species and we have lots of uh, foreign species as well. Our collection of tarantula, which usually interests people, they can use their strength to subdue their prey. Uh, therefore, they do not rely upon the potent of their venom. They usually rely, uh, rely upon their strength. They look like real specimens. They are actually empty shells, empty skins. Nobody killed these tarantulas. Human psychology is a vast topic, and understanding triggers such as fear may help to further expand our general knowledge as a species. What is also interesting is that some people in fact love arachnids, and even go to the extent of having tarantulas as pets and find their menacing anatomy to be an occurrence of wonder. Technology may shed light on why some people have acquired specific traits, opening up conversations in areas such as ancestral trauma, lack of certain nervous system reactions, or education enabling the transcendence of fear. The spider's web is also a very interesting feature that has been well documented in both mythology and scientific texts for numerous reasons, even featuring in the Quran, allowing the Prophet a safe hiding place in a cave covered with the web of a spider, showing time has passed since someone last entered. Further exploring the reasons and triggers for fear, the web is a very sinister plot nature has developed, entrapping and mummifying its victims, leaving them deceased and hanging, paving way for horror film inspirations and dark scenes in epic stories such as Lord of the Rings. Eight-legged freaks really cranked up the scale of the spider to amplify and show how devastating the potential effects of the organism upscaling would be. This potential may be a very rational reason for the fear of the species, that's numbers also could raise some concern. Arachnophobia as a phenomenon uh, is, uh, in my opinion, is a learned habit rather than an innate feature. 